it's Mike Melinda, editor-in-chief of Guitar Player Magazine, and I'm on Musicians on the Record. <laughs> Can you give us uh, a glimpse of a little bit of just a maybe briefly a day in the life of what editing Guitar Player Magazine and online is? What What's a typical day like for you? Well, of course, it, it's changed. I mean, it's so funny to think about 1997, 98, uh, where it was pretty much all the magazine all the time. So you had three weeks to four weeks to get an issue plan. Yeah. Um, you had a bunch of editors, uh, copy editors, and uh, two art directors, you know, per magazine back then. And, uh, you know, you walk into people's offices and they might be writing songs or asleep, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, because there was time to, to let everything kind of gestate. Yeah. And um, obviously today, with the web yeah. and uh, Twitter, Facebook, sure. Instagram, you know, we have like almost hourly deadlines. You're constantly looking for, for stories, constantly looking to either curate things to put online or to write original stories that are going to resonate with the audience. Right. And you throw that on top of the magazine, which still has a, a three-week gestation period from... Uh, you know, deciding what we're going to do to putting it out. Sure. But it, that's that's a lot of work. It's and a lot of work. Because the, yeah, because of the way the publishing industry has gone, which has been shrinking, we have less editors to, to do that work. So it's quite a, I mean, I, I give credit to everybody on the staff, from the production people to the freelancers to the art directors to the editors. It, it's a lot of work. Sure. It's a yeah. lot, it's a ton of pressure. Yeah. And we have to still maintain the same level of quality, no matter no matter what we do. Yeah. So, and uh, it's, it's all online. People can go check it out. Guitarplayer.com. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 And, and what are we talking about? Maybe ninety, ninety-five percent of the staff are guitar players themselves, or has that changed over time as well? Well, as far as the uh, the editors go, and the it's a hundred percent. It's always been hundred percent. Okay. Like you didn't get a job as a guitar player if you weren't a player yourself. Right, right. Now, if you were an assistant art director or a production person that schedules, you know, the print run and things like that, well, of course, you're probably you're somebody who probably likes music, but not necessarily a, a player. Yeah. Sure. What are some of the highlights so far? Because I'm sure there are more to come, Mike. But just being the editor in chief, working at Guitar Player Magazine. I imagine, like you just said, you spoke with Adrian Blue on the phone. Who have you gotten to meet? Who do you wish you could meet? Well, it's it's been, I mean, you know, I mean, how can you? It, it's so it's so crazy to even visualize that that pretty much every hero I've ever had in my whole life I've been able to talk to or meet as the editor of Guitar Player. Uh, haven't met Jimmy Page, um, but pretty much everyone else, except for John Lennon and uh, George Harrison, um, pretty, much, pretty much everyone else you can name, I've, I've had some kind of a, either written about them or interviewed them in person or on the phone or, or, or had a, a, you know, a, a relationship with them. It's been, it's been crazy. Yeah. It's been, uh, I mean, and, and it's all about, it's all about the job, but, but I, I still realize too that it's all about the job. You know, it's not, I've made some good friends, but I've also made those good friends because I'm the editor of guitar player. So I always sure. make sure that that's always top of my mind in any interactions. You exactly. Know? 